Here's a story. Your childhood friend was dating an older white woman. After he breaks up with her, she becomes furious and begins to threaten his life. One day, that same friend invites you to the club. On the way home, he offers to drive one of his friends to a hotel. From the back seat, he then shoots your friend in the head three times. As you watch the life leave his body, he then shoots you in the back of your head. The white woman who your friend had been dating paid to have him killed, and you were just a casualty of war. But no one would guess you'd survive. Trapping Anonymous. He opened the car door and he stepped out. And when he did that, like I turned around like this and I looked at his face because that's the only reason I'm able to even know what he looks like right now was because I turned and looked at him directly in his face like that. And by the time I spent my head back around like this, all I heard was pop, 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 pop. And I felt like fire on my air, like fire. Ironically enough, you recorded a video of your son. We were out eating, recorded him, put the phone like this, showed the, the scenery or whatever. And he was right in the background. And I didn't realize until I was on the plane just going through my stuff and I seen him. What's good? My name is Chris Dows. This is Trapping Anonymous. Welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you, everybody that's been helping keeping the movement moving. Please follow me on that Instagram at Chris Dows, at Trapping Anonymous. DM me. I do answer my DMs. Um, that's how we get a lot of these stories to the light and bring them to the forefront. Uh, the story that we have for you today is just, I mean, I've never heard anything like it. And um, there's, there's just something to be learned from, in my opinion, the power of God. Do remember that the stories that you hear reflect real life. They're here to entertain, they're here to educate, and hopefully keep your little homie off the streets. This is Traveling Anonymous. My name is Chris Styles. Let's get it. How are you? I'm great. Um, I like to start off every episode with your name. My name is Maya. So tell me about the night that you went out with your friend. Okay. Was this so, somebody that, you know? So he was a family friend. Um, been around for years. Um, this was our first time hanging out, like, alone, though, personally. And he, were, we were supposed to go to a party, like, two hours away. And earlier that day, he called me and he said he doesn't want to go anymore because somebody had died out there. They just got shot, and he wasn't feeling that vibe. So I was like, okay, we could just stay here then and go out here. And he was like, okay, I'll pick you up later. Just let me know when you're ready. He texted me, asked me if I'm getting ready. I said, yes. He came. We ended up going to the club. Um, you know, we were having a good time. We talked, we got to the club early. So we ended up walking the beach a little bit. And we talked for mad long about everything, his relationships and stuff, his ex, his old relationships, and he told me that, like, I was like, why did you guys break up? And he said, because she was too possessive and controlling, and he didn't like that. And I was like, okay. Um, we talked about a lot. We laughed. We ended up, like, people started going to the club, so we ended up going that way now. And we were inside dancing. I was drinking a little bit. Um, he stepped, he ended up stepping out. He told me he was going to step out for a second. I said, okay. So I went to like these girls that I know from school days and he like 20 minutes later, he sent somebody inside for me. He was like, um, cat, his nickname is cat. So his friend came in and said, um, cat wants to know if you're ready to leave now or if you want him to circle back and come get you. And I said, I'll leave now. Like I came one, so I'm not just going to stay in the club by myself. So I walked out with the friend and I saw him talking to this other guy in the corner. And, but I'm not paying to no mind. I'm just thinking it's a friend, whatever. So I got in the car and he pulled out a little bit and he stopped and he said to the same guy, it was like, pull up, she's good, like, just come. And he got in the car, 
we drove like 20, I would say like 20 minutes out from the village. And the whole car ride was just, it was like weird because mm -hmm. Kat was talking to him, but he's not replying. Like, you know, he's, I'm thinking it's just because I'm here. He don't want to speak. So, right. but so he's giving just straight one word answers. And I'm like, okay, maybe it's just because I'm here. Um, we ended up getting closer to the place and the spot he wanted to, he was supposed to be getting dropped off at. Um, so we're getting closer and he's, my friend is asking him, asking him like, who's, who's getting you or whatever. And he's like, don't worry about that. You're not going to know who it is. Instead, I already felt weird. Hmm. So instantly I was like, hold on. Like, I don't even know who the hell is behind me. Right. Um, so we get to the spot now and my friend is asking him, like, you want me to pull over here or you want me to go up a little bit more? And he was like, no, you could stay right here. Like, cause up more would be in the light. Mm -hmm. We were parked, we were pulled over in like the dark corner. And he was like, no, you could stay right here. And my friend, we just stayed there and waited for his ride to come. Um, so I saw a car coming down the street and he was like, that's, he was like, this set of blind area. Yeah, that's my ride right here. And he ended up, he opened the car door and he stepped out. And when he did that, like I turned around like this and I looked at his face because that's the only reason I'm able to even know what he looks like right now is because I turned and looked at him directly in his face like that. And by the time I spent my head back around like this, all I heard was pop, 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 pop. And I felt like fire on my air, like fire. It burned so bad. I just like when it happened, I was like, this cannot be gunshots right now. Like, but I thought fast, like I, I immediately fell like in between my legs and I played dead. I played dead for like a couple of minutes because my air was ringing. So I don't know. I didn't know if I could, if he was still behind me or I don't know what was going on. I heard like after a while it stopped ringing like as loud as it was before. And I heard like my friends, I don't know if it was my blood from and behind behind my head or my friend, but I just heard shh, like spraying out, like mm. blood just spraying. And like the background, like the music in the background. And after like a couple of minutes, I grabbed my phone because my phone was in between my legs. I grabbed it and I was still linked over. I just put the phone under the seat because I don't know if he's still there and I don't want them to see me moving and I'm putting in my passcode and I'm trying to call my mom. And like at the moment the phone started ringing, I opened the car door and I jumped out to jump into the bushes that was next to us. I thought I could run. I don't know why, but as I stepped out, I fell and I just dragged myself into the bushes. And the first time I called her, she didn't answer. The second time I called her, she answered. And it's crazy because she told me the only reason she answered was because my son woke up screaming and she went to go get him. And that's why she missed my first call. But when she came back in the room with him, she saw me calling her. So um, the second call she answered and I said, Ma, I just get shot, get dead, juice, 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 shoot me, juice, shoot me. She's like, she thought I was playing at first. She was like, what? I said, I just got shot. She was like, no, what, where you dead? Where you dead? And I'm, I'm explaining to her the name of the resort, Finkas, and she's not understanding what I'm, because my mouth is like swollen, bad. Everything is swollen. So my mouth is like this, and I'm talking to her like this, like, I'm a Finkas. She's like, Finkers? I'm like, no, A, B, C, D, E, F, Finkers. She's like, okay. And she sent her friend, because she was with her friend, she sent her friend to the um, police station, which was directly across the street from her house. 
Um, and that's the only reason why the cops even came, because nobody called. <laughs> People heard the gunshots, but nobody called the cops. So her friend went over there. Um, it started raining. Like it had, it was raining all night, but it had stopped. It slowed down. And when I was in the bushes, it just started pouring, like <laughs> even more harder. And I remember just laying there because at one point she hung up on me too. So I remember just laying there like with my eyes rolling to the back of my head. And it's crazy because from your same interview, I remember the girl saying, um, like, don't go to sleep. If you feel sleepy, don't go to sleep. It's your mind playing a trick on you or whatever. You're not going to wake back up. And I, I remember, it's crazy. I remember that. And I just, as soon as I, cause I was, I was literally closing my eyes and I just opened it back. Like, that's fucking insane. Mm-hmm. And I told, she had, she called back and I answered and I told her, I was like, ma, I can't hold on no more. I'm, I'm going, I'm going. She was like, no. She started screaming. She was like, listen to your baby. Cause my baby was crying in the background. She was like, listen to your baby, your kids need you. She was like, Jemai, Kimani, they need you. You gotta stay up. What am I <laughs> She was like, they need you, you gotta stay up. And I swear like that. <laughs> that gave me all the strength I needed. Mm. I, I mean, just thank you for having the courage to, to come here and just give you a testimony. I don't know if I've ever heard anything like that before. I hear a lot of stories. Nothing quite like this. So when you were in the in the car, did you did you see your friend get shot? Did you see it happened so fast? It happened so fast. The minute, like I said, I looked at him, bent my head this way, and I heard like I'm the type of person when I when stuff happens, I freeze. So I didn't. I just heard the gunshots, and I I didn't look at him. That whole time I was in the car with him, I didn't look at him. I could not look at him because I already, I, I knew he was gone. And I didn't want to, if I would have looked at him, I probably would have passed out and I don't know. But you just knew? I knew he was gone. He didn't try to reach for me. He, I don't, I didn't hear any movements from him. I didn't hear him trying to say anything. I just knew he was gone. What are you thinking in that moment? What like if you can think in that moment? What is, like what are you? The first thing that came to my mind was my kids. I was wow. like, I cannot leave my kids like this. I wow. can't. I can't. And because I was gonna, I was just gonna stay in the car. I wasn't gonna try to move. I was just gonna lay there. And like I was like, no, no, I can't. I can't. My kids. So you didn't, you weren't even sure that he got out of the car because I know you said that the car approached from behind, which was obviously his getaway car. No, it, the car approached towards us. Like, oh, so there was a car him. facing you. Mm -hmm. So you didn't hear him get out. You didn't hear him go to the car, to the getaway car. You just... He was already out of our car. He was standing like outside with the door open. Oh, so he didn't do it while sitting mm -mm. down. He was standing he up. He either he reached in and did it, or he just stayed right where he was and put his hand out. But he didn't. Um, he wasn't sitting down inside. He was already standing out, ready to go to the car that was approaching. What was the the kill switch for you in your mind to be like, okay, this ain't right. 
Like, was it a certain thing that he said, or it was just the overall feeling and the vibe that he gave? The overall feeling. The over, the whole car ride, I wanted... Before we even got that far, I wanted to say, I want to go home first, but I didn't want to be annoying and like, mm. like you know? Mm -hmm. I just didn't want to be annoying, so I left it alone, but I swear on everything I love, I was thinking it. Like, I, I knew it was something was off. And I don't, I have two kids. I don't play right. those games. What motivated you to get out of the car? In my mind, okay, just stay there. Like, wh why did you, what was your first instinct, get out of the car? I have no idea to say. I don't know why I jumped out. <laughs> but I think because I was scared and I thought, I, okay. I don't know, I just wanted to get away from, I don't know. I thought he was still around or whatever. I didn't right. want them to come back and then find me there and try to shoot me again. Because you said that you thought you could actually run mm -hmm. and you couldn't. Mm -hmm. um, we spoke. You told me that your mother was asleep mm -hmm. and that she had woke up because your son was crying. What? Right. And she said he just jumped out his sleep screaming out of nowhere. He was sound asleep and just jumped up screaming. She said if she if if he didn't wake her up, she would have never stolen our calls because her phone was on silent. That sleep that is described by so many people with near death experiences. Um, the episode that you actually referenced was Feli when she had got stabbed 33 times, but um, one thing that she kept doing was fight her sleep. Mm -hmm. One, whoa, like even thinking about trapping anonymous, <laughs> right? Like I can't even, I can't even fathom that, that we would have this sort of reach to where people can actually use some of these things to mm -hmm. help save their own lives. Like, Praise God for that. Yeah. Um, and then now, having you here, like, I don't even know. Because your story is going to hit somebody else with that same impact. Your story is going to touch somebody in that same way that Feli's episode touched you. And who knows, you know, yeah. the, the, the lives that, that, that we could touch. So just thank you for sharing that. that was just it's a powerful one. It's just a testament to our work. Um, what happens next? How do you say, how long do you, how long were you laying there between getting shot and actually someone coming? It felt like forever, but honestly, it was probably like, I would say like 20 something minutes, but it felt way longer. I mean, 20... That's, that is long. Yeah, like 20 minutes after being shot in the head. But we're in Belize. We're not in America. So it's like... So you're not originally from America? No. I was born in Belize. Born in Belize. So going back home was something that was normal for you? It was, it was my first time taking my kids on vacation to meet my mom and my dad. Wow. And what age did you come to America? 14. 14. Mm -hmm. Is this something that is, is crime? Is this sort of crime sort of regular out there? Yeah. Because in my but mind... But they usually just get away. Yeah. <laughs> this is like a vacation, though, for you. Like, yeah, it's a vacation. It, it don't have... I don't... Like, it wouldn't happen to... I'd say, like, tourists or anything. But I'm... When I go home, I'm a local, so it's just like I'm a local. So you're able to attend like the parties there and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they they get you, they bring you to the hospital. In my mind, the hospital is not state of the art. This is not like New York Presbyterian, right? Mm -hmm. So what are the conditions of like sort of the hospital there, and was the medical staff able to treat you? Um, so after being in the bush for that long, the cops and finally came. They didn't know I was in the bushes. They didn't know, they, they didn't even know I was in the car. 
and they oh, just see I, this one male. Mm -hmm. Did anyone else come? Did anybody come back? Did they come looking for you? Did, did anybody make so sure? So when I was laying in the bushes, I seen a flash, like a, a light. And I, I remember being on the phone with my mom and I'm like, shut up, because I had her on speaker. I was just laying there next to the phone like this. I had her on speaker and I'm like, shut up. They're coming back to look for me. And she's mm. crying on the phone. I'm like, shut the fuck up. You're going mm. like, to have them find me. And like, Shortly after that, the cops showed up. I don't know. Uh, to this day, I don't know who that person was, but I thought they was looking for me. I thought he came back. Mm. I thought he saw me running the bush or something. So I'm immediately thinking it was him. Um, so the cops came. I seen the lights. So I was laying up like this. I just seen the lights. I seen the cop lights and I heard I heard them get out their cars and everything, but I don't. Nobody's looking for me, so I'm like, police, police! I'm in here. I'm in the bushes. I'm in the bushes, and I'm kicking my legs like the bushes are tall. It's like some tall, tall bushes. I'm kicking my legs on it to like make movement so they could find me. And it was like, it was like, y'all hear that? Somebody's in the bushes, da, da, da. and I'm like, I'm over here. They came. They found me. They looked at me. <laughs> I was like, who did this to you, miss? I was like, Juice. Juice did this to me. Hmm. As soon as I said Juice, it's like everybody know who that is. Mm. He went straight to the cop car, pulled up pulled up his picture on his phone and showed it to me. I was like, yes, him. Pulled up his picture on the phone as you're laying there, gunshot wound to the head. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> so nobody's touching me. I'm telling them, like, take me to the hospital now. I don't want to die. I have two kids. I don't want to die. I can't die here. They were like, we can't touch you, da da da. I'm like, it's no no ambulance is gonna come get me right now. Y'all have to take me. And then I heard like this guy, an American, I guess I was staying at the resort. He told him, like, yeah, I gotta take her, man. Yeah, I can't leave her here. They was gonna leave you. Mm -hmm. Like they was just gonna just wait. wait for the mm -hmm. So I'm begging them and they finally said, um, you know, we're gonna put her in the back of the truck. And they picked me up. But before all that, I had to remind the cop to please keep talking to me and hold my hand because I don't want to go to sleep or die. And they're all like contemplating on doing it. Nobody's trying to help me for real. I'm just like, and then one officer finally came and he held my hand and he was like, you got this, miss. You got two babies. You got this. Mm. And mm. they picked me up by my legs and my hands. I told them to hold my neck because like, I felt like after this is at this point, I started feeling everything. Like now I could feel like something's really wrong with my neck. I told one of them to please hold my neck and they put me in the back of this pickup truck. Um, I remember just laying there looking up in the sky at the stars and everything. Wow. Eyes rolling back still still fighting everything. And every time I would do it, the same officer, he would be like, miss, your two sons, you got this, you got mm. this. Mm. Mm. We finally reached a clinic, because we're in a village, there's no hospitals around. We reached the clinic, the lady was sleeping. She was not opening her door. The lady <laughs> was took, asleep? It took her like five minutes to come outside. It was like, she's sleeping, she not, she, is she here? And she finally came out and went down to the, cause her house is like on top of the clinic. So she just went downstairs, took me in. She was like, I can't, she was like, I can't treat a gunshot wound. Y'all gotta call the ambulance um, from the hospital in Dangrigo, which is like an hour and something away. Still fighting sleep, still awake, still bleeding. Still bleeding, still everything. Like an hour has passed. Mm-hmm. The most she did was put drips in my arm. And I'm just laying there. My mom finally got there. She came with my baby. I saw him. Mm. Gained all the strength. Mm. <laughs> all the strength. Mm. He was just looking at me like, like, what is wrong with you? This is the one-year-old, by the way. He was just looking like, no, no emotion on his face. Just like confused. Like, what? It was, it was crazy. I remember grabbing his little toes mm. <laughs> and I asked the lady, I was like, can I go to sleep? She was like, um, I don't know why she told me. I feel like she told me yes. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I don't know if it's my mind playing tricks on me right now, but <laughs> I feel like she said yes. Like, oh, this is why she said yes. She thought I only got grazed. Oh. She was like, that's not a gunshot when she got grazed. Nobody actually knows. What... Nobody, nobody knows. I, and I remember feeling in the back of my head and I felt the hole. And I told her it's a hole in the back of my head and she looked and she didn't see it. And she felt her finger, she didn't feel it either. So I was like, no, you got, sh if, if you did get shot, it was right here and it's still, the bullet is still inside. If you could look at the camera and just show them that. I mean, I think it's a pretty cool <laughs> scar. You know, you got a good conversation started. Um, but I mean, your face is intact. You, like you, the muscles in your that like you can smile, you can blink, you can. The fact that that is the reminder right there, like every day. You know, some people get shot in the leg and die. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What? And I was saying this to you uh, before the interview was just. Your purpose is like you know for a fact that like you're you're here for a reason. So many people fight their entire lives trying to figure out if they have a meaning or a purpose or not. But like whether you know what the purpose is or not, you know that it's just not your time, and that must be a good feeling. A great feeling. It's crazy. Two days before that, I was in my mom's room, just sitting there crying like. What's my, I, I was like, what's my purpose? I have no purpose. Like, I'm just here. I'm not happy. I started questioning God. I was like, I was crying and everything. I'm talking to myself, but I was talking out loud. And I'm like, are you, do you even exist at this point? I was like. But you won't question him no more, huh? Ever. <laughs> Don't catch me doing that again. <laughs> oh, you want to know I exist? Hold that. <laughs> um... Okay. So now, she thinks she just got grazed. Obviously, the the wound was more severe, but you don't take her advice. You still stay up. You're like, uh, that don't sound right. Mm -hmm. What happens? Does the ambulance come? Do they take you somewhere else? What? So another officer walked in after she said I got grazed. He was like, no, she didn't get shot at all. She just got gun butt. I'm like... I'm not paying him no mind, though, because at this point, I don't even, I don't, like, I know I got shot, but, like, I don't, I don't know. Right. It's whatever y'all seeing. Y'all seeing me. I didn't see myself yet. But, um, the ambulance had, took 45 minutes to get there, so I had to stay up 45 minutes. Took another 45 minutes to get back to the hospital. Got to the hospital. They couldn't do anything for me because... Nobody there specializing and specializes in what I needed to get done, which was like um, they needed a facial surgeon or some shit, some shit like that. I don't know. So that was reconstructive surgery. Yeah. Whoever deals with yeah. the head, whatever. So I had to get in another ambulance. This is the third ambulance. <laughs> this is the second. The first was just a cop car. Okay. So I had to get in another ambulance. Two hours, two hours and like 30 minutes away to the hospital. And you still have to stay up this entire time? Mm-hmm. I was, at this point though, I ended up falling asleep. Like not, I didn't fall asleep, but I was, I was falling asleep. My mom, in and out. yeah, she in told out. me, she was like, she kept waking me up though. Um, we got to the hospital. Two and a half hours away. They didn't, oh, on our way there. We got a, the, whoever was driving the ambulance got a call saying, pull over right now. Y'all need two cop cars in the front and the back. Apparently, the ex of my friend Kat is looking for me for some odd reason. She, she went to the dad's house looking for me. She went to the hospital I was at after, thank God, after we left. Um... So yeah, they sent out two cop cars. We had to wait for them to get there. So this was a hit. Definitely a hit. This lady, white lady, that your friend was dealing with, the one that he was telling you about in the beginning of your story, that he broke up with, threatened his life. Mm-hmm. But she meant it. Mm -hmm. 
So this lady goes to the father's side because while I was searching this story, I saw a news article about the father just talking about how this white woman came to his house, didn't ask about his son, her ex, nothing, but they kept asking about you, which makes it sort of seem like this weird love triangle. Mm -hmm. Were you intimate with your friend? Were you and your friend a thing? Never. Okay. So this lady now assuming he was with a girl. I don't think she was assuming he was with a girl. I just think because he didn't want to be with her anymore. Gotcha. They Ben had everything planned out. I just happened to be there that night. Okay, let's get back to that. What happens when you get to the hospital? Um, okay, we're at the hospital now. They cannot see me unless I pay thirty five hundred believe dollars. Yeah. So yeah, they don't I was literally in the wait I was literally in the waiting room until we got that money to pay it. Um How'd you get the money? My mom's friends, everybody came to I had the money but I, they took my phone at right. the scene, so I had no like I didn't have my cards, anything. So my mom's friend, she helped out, my mom everybody just came together. Wow. Got the money. That you could be sitting there with a, a bullet in your head. <laughs> and unless you got the money, you can't come in. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so we got in. We, they hooked me up to, we paid the money, got in, hooked me up to drips, whatever. They took me to get my scans. Honestly, I don't remember any of that. I don't know why. I can't remember any of that. I just remember coming back. And I just remember laying in the hospital, yeah. What was the bullet's trajectory? Because, like, when you think about the neck, anything spinal, especially when it comes to, like, bullets or injuries, paralyzed. That's what, that's what I'm thinking. So, like, where did the bullet travel and how did it miss everything? Like, I... <laughs> God, that's yeah. how it missed everything. Yeah, yeah. But... It hit, what did it hit? A left vert, I don't even vertebrate? know. Vertebrate? Vertebrate mm -hmm. art artery. Oh. It punctured it, like it punctured it, and it hit my jaw. Hmm. What is it called? I don't remember. I mean, we don't need the terms, yeah, but <laughs> it, it. Oh, yeah, it fractured my jaw and came right out my cheek. Uh, it's like you, you said that you could barely eat, like you had to get your jaw wired shut. Mm -hmm. I had to get my jaw wired shut. I could only drink stuff, couldn't eat. I ended up losing way more weight than I had already. I was already slim, but I ended up losing a lot more. And the doctor, when he saw me again, he was like, whoa, wow. he took it off. He was like, try to eat something. And that's yeah. When did this happen? When? How long ago did this happen? Um, I got shot April 14th. So that's like what? Two months? Two months ago. This is still very real. Like a very like real ongoing situation. Two months ago, three surgeries. She came to trap an anonymous. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. No, all seriousness. It, you go through that two months ago, and is anyone arrested? Is any like, what is the police development? Where is this guy at? That same night, a cop helped him out the village because they had checkpoints set up for him. A cop helped him out the village. He was on the run until what? A couple of days ago. Thanks to me. <laughs> Before we get there, I saw that there was a five thousand dollar wanted bounty on his head. Three thousand. Oh, three thousand dollars. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, did did anyone come forward? Or did anyone try to help with that development? People came forward, but all they kept saying was, "They told the cops already. The cops go right back and tell them who's talking, and they received threats afterwards." He was related to the police commissioner. Mm -hmm. Stepson. Stepson. So he's obviously getting help from the inside. 
That's crazy. My first my first day in the hospital, he came, the commissioner of police. He came to talk to me, to check up on me. What? Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go back to, it's just, this, this story has so many different pieces and so many different working parts. After you get shot, his ex, the white woman, the older white woman, comes to the father's house and asks about you. They didn't think you survived or they was hoping you didn't survive or they thought you were like, mm -hmm. they was looking for your body. I was supposed to be dead. <laughs> they, they heard, cause you know, it's a little village where right. it's travel fast. Um, they heard that I made it, that I'm alive. So she didn't go over there crying about her ex that she was just with two weeks ago, whatever. All she was worried about was me. That's weird. Where did he escape to? Where did he go? Nobody knows. <laughs> Nobody knows. Nobody knows. I heard all. I heard he was on a, a little island. All kinds of stuff. I heard he was still in the village. I heard he was in the city. I heard he made it through to America. Did you receive any threats? Anybody from the family? Did you? Personally, I didn't receive any threats, but the brother, every time I would post a wanted picture, he would come and react to it on Facebook with hearts. What? Like 25 times. Like heart, you know how it shows the numbers, heart, 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 heart. On each of them. I, I usually post it three times a day. Like, on Facebook? Mm hmm And his brother would heart it? And the day I was in the hospital, he posted on Facebook, it's not over until a fat lady sings at the altar, keep fucking up. Basically, shut up, girl. I did some more digging. I'm so fascinated with this story. I did some more digging. This family has a long line of, a long history of crime and getting away with it in Belize. Getting away with it every single time. There was an article, I think they found guns and weapons and all kinds of... Are you sort of afraid about like who we're dealing with here? Do you feel like your safety is threatened? Maybe? A little bit. Because I know what they're capable of. What's making you talk? The fact that he was good, that he was trying to kill me. He was going to leave me in that car for whoever to find me. Oh, my kids would have grown up motherless. That's why. It's personal. It's personal. And you hurt my friend. My friend had his whole son. He, he listened to my friend say in that car. He had to pick his son up from the 830 boat that morning. If. If I didn't live, they were friends. You know that, right? They were friends. If I didn't live, he would have shown up to his funeral and everything. Wow. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming you didn't go to the funeral. I, it, I couldn't. I was, I had cops. Um, I always had a cop with me wherever I stayed in Belize. I had to be on watch, on guard, or whatever. Do you think you'll ever go back home? I don't think so. I, I don't even want to. I don't even want to. I love I love my country. What if you know me? Mm. My Instagram name is Belizean Beauty. If you know me, <laughs> I got the map tatted on my back. I love my country, but that ruined it for me. <laughs> what other sort of PTSD do you live with after this incident? So every time I would shower, I would get panic attacks because of it, like it would feel like the rain and it just reminds me of that night. Every time I would hear like a little pop sound, I'm ready to run. Like I remember after it happened, my mom, she called me and she was on, she was on the phone. She was talking to the guy in the car and she said something about, we, she said we ran out of gas. We, we run out of gas, but I'm like, all I heard when I answered the phone was run and I'm ready to open the oh door and gosh. run. Like I was paranoid. I'm still paranoid, but I was, it was bad in Belize. Like, mm -hmm. How long were you in the hospital? 
um, for like four days. Four days. Every day is 3,500. So at one point I'm just like, we're just sitting here and nothing's happening. They didn't, he didn't recommend me to fly. So I just had to stay in Belize because it's like the pressure could do something. I don't know, in the plane. And I stayed in Belize for like a month. <laughs> With no t no treatment, no nothing. And you know we, you you already have a GoFundMe set up, and um you know if people are compelled to donate, they'll have access um, to it. Mm -hmm. We'll also tag it and um, collaboration collaborate with your page so that they could be able to find it. And you know any everything helps. You know. Yeah, I still have another surgery to do. Um, I have, well, two. I have to go into get my jaw wired shut again, and another one is to check on the um, fragments. The fragments in my neck to make sure nothing's going wrong. Because he said I could. It's possible that I could um, and end up having a stroke. So they got to check on it every now and then wow. to make sure nothing's happening. <laughs> funny, funny story that you had told me about. Uh, the doctor trying to operate on your head, and I guess he was cutting too much hair. <laughs> he cut it. <laughs> I was crying. He was like, he was like, girl, what's more important, your hair or your life? <laughs> Yo, I'm like, why well, can't? <laughs> it's funny now, but I was really here crying. He's like, kill me if you're gonna take my hair. No, fuck it, just kill me. <laughs> Oh, man. Um, how were you able to assist in his capture? Um, so, I had a dream about his baby mother that a night, like what? When was this? A couple nights ago. I had a dream about his baby mother that Maybe was... Maybe like two, three, two, three days ago. Really? Yeah, it was like... like it was yeah, like four days ago. I had a dream about her. I was fighting her. I was beating her with pots and pans because she... I forgot to tell y'all. She um went in saying he was with her all night. He didn't leave the house. Juice, the person that shot me. Oh. So that was the alibi. The alibi. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have this dream that you beating her with pots. <laughs> pots. I just woke up and I'm like, I'm laying there thinking, I'm like, okay, they're saying he's trying to cross the border. They're saying he's already here. Let me just Google and try to find a way to see if he's in the system because I know people like Cross you could see that they're in the system or whatever. So I typed in his name, Ellis Maine, and I see one result and I'm like, oh my God. I called ICE so fast. I was like, the person you guys have in there is wanted for murder and attempted murder. He killed my friend and he shot me in my head. What? Yep. He was like, oh my gosh, hold on one second, ma'am. And trans she spoke to me a little bit. She transferred me to another lady that questioned me and she was like, okay, we're on it. We're getting in contact with whoever they needed to contact and believe. I mean, just, it's like you, you still, you still have to be the hero in your own story, right? Like mm -hmm. you still got to be the one that's nobody on it. Nobody was, nobody's helping me. <laughs> nobody was helping us. The family, Kat's family, my family. Every time we would go in to ask about something, it's like we're bothering them. Has to do our own thing. Hopefully, when we put this spotlight on your story, um, it will assist. Because I, I hear that, like sometimes the sentencing could be very light for like murders out there. You were telling me. Mm -hmm. Um Hopefully, this this puts a fire under whom whomever is in power. Like well, people are watching and. Mm -hmm. I hope so too, especially the fact that they get away with so much. I hope this time, me being a witness, alive, ready to talk, because they had witnesses before. Everybody just gets threatened, so they never show up to court. But I'm not giving up, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine that sound bite? <laughs> you see, you'll see I'm that. You'll see that little. Up. Oh my gosh! Oh man. Do you ever have a survivor's guilt? Was like. Mhm. Mm Usually it would just be like, why couldn't my friend make it too? Like why? Like sometimes I feel guilty for just 
saying like, wow, thank God I'm alive. Wow. Like, why couldn't he make it too? But I'm not gonna question you, God, I'm not. Just, what was that night like? What was that, 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 that final, that final night like? There was um, a video I saw that you had posted. We had a great night. We had a great night. Like, I was not expecting that ever. It was a great night, I'm telling you. We, like, what? We laughed, we connected, we clicked. It was a vibe. Never expected it. He didn't, I don't think he did either. It was just something you had said in, in the video. It just was like, he had asked you, like, were we, like, going on live or something? And you were like, nah, this was, this was. This is a video for the memories. And that's the last video that you have. Mm-hmm. Ironically enough, you recorded a video of your son. With him in the background, the killer. With the shooter mm -hmm. in the background. I just made a random video. I was just, I always record. I have, if you look at my phone, I have like 14,000 videos. I just always pick up the phone and record. We were out eating, recorded him, put the phone like this, showed the, the scenery or whatever. And he was right in the background. And I didn't realize until I was on the plane just going through my stuff and I seen him. What, re what, what keeps replaying in your mind? the last, those last couple of seconds of hearing the gunshots, like just me turning and turning back. And I remember, I remember my friend's face, how before it happened, cause we were talking regular. He was just looking straight out at the car coming up. That's the last, that's like, those seconds replay like 20 times in my head a day, like, and every time, like, I would, like, every, like, now and then, every time I would just gaze out. And if you see me gazing out, that's what I'm thinking about. And I just, mm. it crawls my skin. I hate thinking about it. What has this past two months been like for you? I mean, solving your own case, solving your, your friend's murder. How has is, how is these last two months been like your mental health and everything? hard. I honestly, I didn't think he would get caught this quick. God, don't make mistakes. I felt it though. Like, again, I was recording a video and I'm saying, I'm singing a pop con song. He was saying, I don't care who you are. Karma's going to show you a sign. He was like, I don't care where you are. It's only a matter of time. Can you say it in like, <laughs> how he, like how he said it? <laughs> <laughs> He said, me not care who you are, karma go show you a sign. Me not care where you are part, it's only a matter of time. I got down with that, that <laughs> joint, that joint sound kind of fire. It is. <laughs> oh man, um, if you could go back in time, what would you have done differently? I'm sure you probably have I thought about that I think about this all. all the time. It's like sometimes I say nothing. Sometimes I say I, I should have just went home. But if I would have just went home, it would have been a whole different story. They would have, they would have, they would have thought I had something to do with it. Cause I'm the last person he was seen with. Everybody would say that. But they would never say that. They saw him getting in the car too. Mm. But I'm happy I went. Cause I would have never, I would have never been able to say like, oh, I know his face. I, I, I didn't, I didn't really look at his face when I walked out until. So I'm happy I went, or it would have been a blank loss for real. Yeah. How would you describe the relationship that your friend had with this older white woman? Um. So she was into real estate. She had money, obviously. Mm. Um. Because the obvious thing people are going to think that this woman has mm -hmm. money. She's obviously not from there, um, he's using her for her money, you know? 
Honestly, I don't. I I personally don't know, but I think he probably really liked her at one point. At one point. At one point. Um. It was being said that they ended up having a business together, and she made him sign fake documents. Wow. Hmm. Mm-hmm. It, so. I'm sure she probably gifted him a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Did he speak about um, any anything with you that night concerning the intricacies of the relationship? Or was it just sort of like, you know, I'm kind of out, I don't want to do this no more? Yeah, he wasn't, he left her house, he got his own place. He, he did not want that lady no more. Man, that's, and I feel like that triggered her that he's doing everything without her. I was just about to say, that's one thing a master manipulator hates is when you you give them back the stuff and it's like, yo, I don't even yeah, want it no more. Yeah, everything back. Yeah, you can't control me with a gift or a car or mm-hmm. whatever, you know what I mean? It's like, okay, well, so like this, if I, if, if I can't have you, nobody can. Mm-hmm. If you could say something about I mean, your friend, I mean, I want to open the floor for a space for you to, you know. He was, he was the sweetest person to me. He was to everyone, but I'm just saying to me personally, he was very sweet. He was caring. He loved his family. He loved his son. He talked about his son a lot. He, he was, he was a great, he loved kids. He even offered, I told him I was going to be tired the next day. He was like, I'll come and help you out with the kids. He was mad sweet. He was a great person. He didn't deserve that at all. I don't care what what the circumstances were. He didn't deserve that. Hmm. And that's unfair. You know, hopefully his name could live on, you know, even through content like this. Um... What was his name? Roy Lee Burgess, a.k.a. Cat. All right. That's what it is. What was something that you would probably say to him if you could talk to him again? I don't know. Sometimes it, it, it brings closure to sort of try to speak to people, even though they've passed on. Um, I know it's helped me sometimes. I go to my dad's grave and, you know, just talk to him. Um, and if you're not comfortable, you know, saying, I, I totally understand, but um, I don't know, I was, I was curious. Honestly, I would probably curse him out and say, why the fuck did you Try. let him get in the car? Because yeah. I guess he knew the type of people. Yeah. Like, I had a dream about him a couple of nights ago. For the first time, and I said, "Why did you trust him?" And he said, mm. "I." He was like, "Um, I'm the type of person I don't listen to what when people talk bad about somebody. I give everybody the benefit of the doubt." Wow. And I feel like that's really what it was. He really thought that was his friend, you know. Wow. What was what was the learning lesson throughout all of this, if any? If you could, if there's any learning lesson or something that you would take with you for the rest of your life. Something that people could learn from. Follow your gut. Follow your instincts. Pray for the spirit of discernment. This is Trapping Anonymous. My name is Chris Dabbs. Let's get it.